In today's video, we're gonna show you how to make a block mold of an original oil-based clay sculpt that we did using the Chavant Alien Clay. And if you guys wanna check out the video of the sculpting of this piece, you can click in the link and that's gonna take you to the full video of the sculpting. Now, let's just jump into the project and see how the block mold is created. To start making our mold, we first need to secure the original model to the baseboard or the working surface. And for that, I'm using some hot melt glue that I'm simply going to put on the back of our sculpt. Remember, this is sculpted on top of poster board or gator board. And then we're going to put a containment wall around it or build a mold box around our model. I'm using some poster board for this. And then I'm using the hot melt glue here too to bond everything together. Now, once the containment field or the mold box is together, you should have a field around your model that's about half to three quarters of an inch. That will be sufficient for the thickness of the mold. Keep in mind that the thickness of the mold should also apply to the highest point. So in this case, the nose of the sculpt that we did. For this project, we're going to be using the SmoothSill 936. Now, once the A and B components have been dispensed into a clean mixing container, we're going to mix it using a mechanical mixer and a drill. And then we're going to transfer the mixed material into a clean second mixing container and mix it one more time before putting it into a vacuum chamber and vacuum degassing the SmoothSill. If you're not familiar with the vacuum degassing process, you can click on the link that's going to take you to a video that explains it much more thorough in detail. Once the silicone is vacuumed, we can go ahead and start pouring the material over the original model. And I'm simply going to pour in the lowest spot of our mold box and allow the material to seek its own level. So there's actually a couple of reasons why I'm using the SmoothSail 936. Uh, first of all, this is a bit uh, stiffer material, so harder, 36 durometer, which is uh, something I prefer when working with flat artwork that is straight, angular, uh, keeps a profile much easier without having to have some kind of support shell. Also, the material has a longer working time, 60 minutes, which gives me enough time to properly mix the material, vacuum the gasset, and then pour it without having the working time or pot life starting to expire. An added benefit is that this product's mix viscosity is 21,000 CPS, which is much lower than some of the other stiff material, harder durometer materials. The material is now allowed to cure for 24 hours. But before you walk away from a large pour like this, Make sure there are no leaks on the mold box. After 24 hours, the smooth sill has set up and we are ready to start the demold process by removing the mold walls. And then we're going to remove the silicone from the original model. So it's not very typical that you actually save the original sculpt when it's made out of clay. They actually end up being destroyed in the demolding process. But if you're very careful, go slowly, and you bend the mold as you're demolding, then you might save the original from destruction. And there you have it. The smooth sill has captured all the detail of our original sculpt. Now, as I mentioned, we're going to be making a cold casting in this mold. And for that, I'm using the Smoothcast 325 and the brass metal powder. Now, keep in mind, the working time for this material is two and a half minutes. So you want to work fast, but thoroughly. So scrape the sides and scrape the bottom of your mixing containers. Once we mix the product, we're going to pour it into a um, secondary clean mixing container, give it one more mix, and then pour it into our mold. Once we pour all the material into the mold, we can go ahead and spread the material using a chip brush to cover all the surfaces of the inside of our mold. 
Now, I am going to continue brushing the material around the entire mold, moving it from low-lying areas and moving the material to the edges where it's lumping away from. Keep in mind that the metal particles in the mixture are heavy and want to settle out at the lowest spots. So you want to keep the material moving around, covering all the edges until the material has stopped moving and begins to tack up. This first layer of material is called either print coat or face coat. Some even call it a beauty coat because it's the coat that's going to be visible once you demold your casting. At this point, we can allow the material a partial cure of 15 minutes before backfilling it with more material. To simulate a realistic metal casting, we're going to backfill our cold casting here with a Eurofill 17, which is a aluminum-based filler that's going to add weight to the overall casting, making it feel more realistic. We're going to start our mixing procedure by adding the Eurofill 17 to the Part B of the resin. We do this so that we don't work against the pot life or working time of the resin. We don't want to mix the A and B together and then add the filler because we'll be working against that working time of the material. So always add the filler into the Part B before mixing all components together. Once all the components have been mixed thoroughly together, we can go ahead and pour the mixture in the back of our mold. The material is now allowed 10 minutes to cure before handling. And as you can see, the mold has transferred all the detail into our casting. We're now going to polish our casting using some fine steel wool to bring the metal powders that are in the print coat to the surface and shine. When polishing cold castings, you want to use fine steel wool that's either triple zero or four zeros. Anything coarser than that could leave heavy scratches in your casting. A little bit of shoe polish as a final touch adds a little bit of depth to the casting, making the casting pop even more. Here we can see that the molding rubber has captured all the detail from the original clay sculpt. Now we can use this mold to make many reproductions of our artwork. Here you can see the five different metal powders that are available for the cold casting process. All right, so here our final casting. I wanted to show you guys the difference between a casting that's filled with the Eurofill 17 and the casting that is only made with resin. So it does not have any of the filler and you can see that it weighs much less. So with the added filler of uh, Eurofill 17, we're able to simulate the weight of realistic metal casting. Now, if you got inspired by this project and you'd like to give your own projects a go and need some material, you can visit any one of our distributors around the world. So, and there you have it, an easy to follow step-by-step -step procedure that I use to create a block mold of our original oil-based clay sculpt so that we can reproduce many castings that are true to the original. Now, if you have an idea about what we should do next, please let us know down in the comments below. And if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. Now, to keep up with our latest mold making, casting, and other videos, remember to subscribe.